Hello students. In this lecture we are going to study about instruction cycle, the flowchart of instruction cycle and how the instruction is executed. So as you know that instruction is executed in three phases. First fetch, then decode and third that is execution. So here we have this three phase like fetch, decode and execution that's a basic phase uh, how, how we uh, execute the instruction and here is the detailed flowchart of it. So uh, we'll see the flowchart. So as you can see over here first we are starting with the instruction and SC, SC is my sequence counter. which is used to maintain the sequence right so the sequence counter we are initializing it with the value 0 then on the next step that's a T0 timing cycle as you can see over here we are having the timing cycle that's a T0 so at the T0 timing cycle what is happening that uh, we are transferring the value from the program counter to the address register now as you know that program counter holds the address of the next instruction to be executed right so whatever the next instruction is going to be executed that address the address of that particular instruction is to already stored in program counter right so after that particular instruction that is currently executed uh, currently executing right once that is completed after that the next instruction we need to fetch from the program counter right so that address we are having in the program counter that i am transferring into ar what is ar that ar is my address register after that so right now the currently like uh, the instruction that I'm going to execute that address I'm having in address register right again I'm having only address not the entire instruction right so I'm just fetching right so on the fetching phase what I need to do that address is already available in the address register after that T0 timing signal in the T1 timing signal from that address right that memory of that particular address that means at that address the instruction is stored and that instruction i'm transferring into ir what is ir ir is my instruction register and instruction register is stored to uh, is used to store the instruction right so uh, i'm fetching the address right first of all the t0 timing signal and on the t1 timing signal uh, i'm uh, searching for that particular address inside the memory and from that i'll fetch that particular instruction and transferring it to the instruction register right along with that i'm incrementing my program counter now why there is a need to increment the program counter because program counter is having the older value now and that instruction i am already fetched right so after that next instruction should be there address of the next instruction should be there right so that's why i have incremented the program counter now at the t2 timing signal this fetch is completed right t0 and t1 timing cycle this is my fetch right so fetch is completed now once the fetch is done next what i need to do so i need to decode that particular instruction right so as you can see that at t2 timing signal i'm decoding the entire instruction from the instruction register so as you can uh, as you are aware that instruction register is holding that instruction and in that format it's a 16 bit right 0 to 15 right so 16 bit of instruction we have and that 0 to 11 that 12 bit we have the address right then 12 to 14 bit that we have the opcode right this is for the opcode and the last that is 15th bit that is used to show whether we are using direct addressing mode or indirect addressing mode you already know what is direct and indirect addressing modes right so at the decoding phase what i am doing decode the operation code right my controller will uh, decode that instruction right so uh, using that opcode 
I'm decoding that operation code in IR 12 to 14, right? Then ER, this is again address register. I'm updating the value of the address register with the address available in the instruction. That could be the address of the opera, right? Whether it is a direct address or indirect address, right? Now I'm not aware of it, right? But that 12-bit address from the instruction register 0 to 11, that 12-bit address I'm transferring into address register, right? And then now next is last 15th bit of IR. As you know that 15th bit of IR used to show that whether I am using direct addressing mode or indirect addressing mode, right? So that is being transferred in I, right? So this is decoding phase. Now after decoding, uh, before the execution of the instruction, we should be aware of that which kind of instruction we are dealing with, right? Whether it is memory reference instruction or a register reference instruction or an input output instruction. For that, we are checking D7, right? As you know that when we decode the operation code, right, it will be generated signal, right, D0 up to D7, right? D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6 and D7. D0 to D6. These are the signal for the memory reference instruction. So if we have the memory reference instruction, then any from uh, any of the signal from D0 to D6 are going to be generated. And uh, it totally depends on a D7, right? So if we have a memory reference instruction then the signal from d0 to d6 can be generated and if either we are having register reference instruction or input output reference instruction then this d7 signal will be generated so what we are doing over here that we are checking that whether my d7 signal is set or not set means is it equal to 1 or not if your d7 is equal to 1 that means you can say that the instruction that are available is either register reference instruction or input output instruction. If the D7 signal is not set, that means any of the signal from D0 to D6 can be set, right? So if D7 is 0, that means I can say that my instruction is memory reference instruction. So from that, uh, we can uh, get the idea that whether it is input output or register reference instruction or a memory reference instruction. Now, if we go this side, if D7 is equal to 0, that means my re instruction is memory reference instruction. Then again, we have one option that either that instruction is using direct addressing mode or indirect addressing mode. If it is using direct addressing mode, that uh, means no need to do anything directly, we can execute the instruction. But if it is using indirect addressing mode, that means we need to fetch the effective address. Now, what is effective address? Effective address, that means the actual address of your operand, right? So for that, here we are checking I, right? I, that is the 15th bit. We have already transferred in the decode phase that the 15th bit of instruction register is transferred to I. It can be either 0 or 1. If that I is equal to 0, that means we are having direct addressing mode. That means nothing to do in T3 timing signal and we can directly execute the memory instruction, memory reference instruction in T4 timing signal. If I is equal to 1, that means we can say that it's an indirect addressing mode and in indirect addressing mode, we need to fetch the effective address. So for effective address, we go to the address register is already holding the value right address so we search that address from that address we find the memory right that means that effective address and that would be transferred to the ar and after that we'll execute that instruction now if my d7 is 1 that means either i can have a register reference instruction or an input output uh, instruction then again we are checking i and it is based on i like if i is equal to 0 then we can say that it's a register reference instruction and if i is equal to 1 then we can say that it's an input output instruction 
So if i is equal to 0, that means my instruction, available instruction, that is register reference and we will simply execute that register reference instruction at the T3 timing signal. And if i is equal to 1, that means it's an input output instruction and we will execute that input output instruction at T3 timing signal. At the end of that, we will reset the sequence counter. So sequence counter would be uh, reset it, that means it's a 0 right at the T3 timing signal, same here and in the memory reference instruction it will be at the T4 timing signal. As you can see over here that after that the arrows again go to the T0 timing signal. That means again we are, that's a cycle, right? We are studying instruction cycle, so that's a cycle. So again we are fetching the next address from the program counter and storing it at the address register. So this is how the entire cycle goes on. So uh, this is all about instruction cycle. Thank you.